Gus Bradley, defensive coordinator, was the head coach with the Jacksonville Jaguars many times when they played in Europe. We had a chance to catch up with Gus Bradley today, talk about the defense, and talk about this international trip. Yeah, I mean, we're excited about all those guys. I mean, uh, obviously, they're all, they got some length. When they come in the building, you can see that, you know, they got the length that uh, you look for at times, and that can be good and it can be bad. It all comes back to ability, but it's a good starting point with those guys. So, and they use it as an asset for them. So, he's good at the line of scrimmage. He's got tremendous speed, and, uh, you know, he's a student of the game. I know that he just in that short time we were with him, seemed to pick up things pretty quick. Do you think this will be like a trial by fire for that for that group, um, considering how young you all are? Well, we just need, uh, you know, depth and really see how it plays out. You know, get them in the training camp and keep developing them. And that's kind of been our mindset with the younger guys. Let them start, you know, keep improving and see where it ends up with all three of them, really. Gus, are you hoping to impress a little bit more this year than you did last year? Maybe? Yeah, I mean, ideally, when we say we want to be aggressive defense, it, it you know, obviously it starts up front, but on the perimeter, we'd like to be aggressive. So there's times we can and can't beat, but if we can beat, we want to be aggressive on the perimeter. And, you know, that, that's, that's been a theme of us, I think, if anybody looked back and would say that. But without getting too much into the scheme stuff right now, I mean, the, to utilize it, but we'll ask those guys, all of our corners, to do a multiple techniques. But uh, there's times when you need it. Tommy, what, what excites you about him? Tommy? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really strong. I mean, obviously, you guys have seen his stats, right? Very fast, very explosive. So it's just, you know, looking at him to fit in with the D-line. And remember, the goal objective is to try to get where we got eight guys that we can come in waves. And to provide some more help inside there would be great. So he did a good job. Plays extremely hard on tape. That, that's the one thing that we noticed, too, about him. The Colts, Colts like to use, the Colts like to have those guys who can are quick enough to play D N, but big enough to play inside. How do those guys play in your defense? Uh, that, that's what you kind of hope for. You know, especially at three technique, you're looking for a guy that's explosive overall. And, uh, you know, he's going to get his chance on some one-on-one -on -one rushes. So you want him to be able to win there. But the explosiveness at that position is, you know, important. You know, a guy like Buck is unique, right? He's tall, big, fast, all of it combined. So. The three technique is pretty important part of it. And, uh, you know, when you get to third down, you, sometimes you have two three techniques. And so you rush them both ways that way. Is that how you see Dial? Kind of the... Yeah, what, I mean, I think overall, when you look at them, all the guys, we're trying to get them to where they all can, you know, fit in at different spots. You know, they have a role on first and second down, a role on third down. So how that all comes together, there's some, you know, a lot of questions you have to be seen. Well, hopefully in training camp we get clear vision. On the other hand, uh, Grover last week was telling us that he wants to, he's really concentrating on his pass rush right now. He said, he said, he said no, hopefully no. don't take me off the field on third down. Now, right. No, it's not up to him, but <clears throat> is, there more for, is there more for him to grow? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, you know, obviously the first and second down, he played at a high level for yeah. us. But we're always challenging him, you know, that pass rush. And it comes back to always affecting the quarterback. And he has the ability to do that. So we'll see how that progresses, too. Yes, going back to Germany for a second, you obviously had a lot of history playing games, coaching games overseas. What was maybe the biggest thing you learned, kind of the unknown? I, I would say this. You're, you're right, been over there. I think that maybe early in the time process, you're going, oh boy, that's a trip now, you know, flight and, you know, how are we going to do this and how are we going to manage it to keep the players fresh? And then when you go through it all and you get there on Sunday, it's an unbelievable environment. I mean, you're sitting there and, and it's just it's just a different feel to it all. And it's very energizing, I would say. And uh, the emotion, enthusiasm, and the play, it's it's really a cool experience for the players I think, and coaches. It's unbelievable. And I'm guessing in Germany it's the same way you hear about it. It's very, very similar you know, to that type of environment. So the players should be excited, I think, about it. It's a great opportunity. And it's amazing what the game of football you know, presents to you as opportunities. And to go over there and play in front of their fans would be great. How disruptive is it as far as preparation? Um, you know, I think as you go through it, it's, uh, you know, you try to, it depends. I don't know, 
exactly you know our time schedule are we leaving Sunday after the game or are we leaving Thursday I don't know those things but I think that you get used to it and you plan and you can get your preparation in you know and it's not it's not an issue that way you got to be more efficient at times in some areas but it's not like a Thursday night game you know it's not you know how efficient you have to be on a week like that did you like doing the Thursday night trip over or the Sunday right after the game um, it's good. I, I think. The, I think the. You know, as we talk about it, this is getting me in a situation I'm not really <laughs> supposed to say. We're <laughs> <laughs> talking about personal <laughs> things. How about personal <laughs> things? <laughs> you know what? Here. <laughs> no. Uh, um, yeah, I think there's advantages of both. But let, let me say this, just so I can give you something. I, I thought Thursday was pretty good. I thought Thursday was pretty good, just because you get over there, you get acclimated, and you play on Sunday. And uh, it seemed for the trip to London, through my experience, that it worked out pretty good as far as players feeling fresh. Who reaches out, or does anybody reach out to the players to ask who's got a, who's got a passport and needs a passport? Yeah, I'm sure they'll get all that, but it is a great question. Yeah, you know, I'm sure Mulaney and everybody will get involved in that, making sure to set up to make sure everybody's got a train, you know, passport and getting it early. And that that's a process in itself. But you know, the organization will handle that. Great. Is the NFL the reason why you got a passport? Like, did you have one before your? Yeah, I did have one. You already have one. Yeah. <clears throat> you guys got the three new corners, but Dallas Flowers kind of gets lost in the mix. But how does he factor into all? He, he's big. I mean, Isaiah Dallas. That's what he say. Those other threes come in. And you know we got it's competition, right? And you provide depth. You need depth at that spot, and then just see who rises to the top. But uh, we were pleased with how Dallas progressed. Same like Isaiah, when he's on the field and healthy and can play, he does really good things. So it just creates more depth and some young guys with some traits, and we'll see how it all plays out. Late well, last some, season we saw uh, Julian Blackman playing some nickel corner. That was when Kenny went down. You see him just sills a safety who. Yeah, that, we're, we're still looking at those things right now. You know, we talked in the off season and just see how it all come, kind of plays out. We're moving guys around right now, see where the best fit for our team is. And so that will probably be a work in progress as we go. You all signed Jamal Woods at Illinois. Um, what stood out to, to you all as a staff? Do so you want to see more from him um, after working with him? You know, uh, Obviously big and strong, but his explosiveness, I think, in rookie minicamp is what jumped out at us. We felt like even in a short period of time, just watching the drill work, obviously his, his film work that we studied before, but the, the, the way he came in, the way he approached it, and some of his explosiveness showed up in that short period of time. Thanks, okay, thank you. That's Gus Bradley. He doesn't want to get specific about what he wants, what he doesn't want. He, he's just a voice in a room. He doesn't get to set policy. So when they travel to Germany, it's going to be up to somebody else. But he'll weigh in with his opinion. And it sounded like he likes traveling on Thursday.